Here's some tips for the Kermit Dual Modulation Haid from the Harvestman. Frequency and Destination Mode Buttons The upper section controls the frequency of the LFO. Red is for audio rate. Orange is for tap tempo mode, and green is for the LFO mode. On the lower section, red will target the amplitude. Orange will target the wave shapes, and green will affect the frequency. Wave shapes and knob functions. Smoothly morphing over the 16 waves of the wave table with the wave knob. If the destination button is set to orange, the incoming CV will scroll the wave shapes. The large knob sets the amplitude of the oscillator output like a digital VCA. The upper knob manually controls the frequency of the oscillator. In tap tempo mode, it controls the division, multiplication of the tap frequency. The small black CV attenuverter sets the amount of incoming CV. The output of the other oscillator is normal to this input. So for standard operation, turn this control to the center position. The lower oscillator section works exactly the same as the upper one. External CV control, VCA and compression. Incoming CV in red destination sets the amount. While the amount knob closed, incoming CV will act like a digital VCA. While the amount knob is fully open, inverting the CV will attenuate the signal or act like some kind of compression. Sequence Transposition and Wavetable Scanning Sequence to the 1 volt per octave The green destination is for the frequency. By adding or inverting the incoming signal, you can transpose the sequence. In orange destination mode, some LFO will smoothly morph the waveforms or you can try step CV. LFO and modulations. Set the upper button to green to access LFO mode. Using the Kermit's first LFO to control the Hertz Donuts waveforms discontinuity. You can try different wave shapes. And if your CV destination does not have an attenuator, you can reduce the signal's amplitude with the Kermit's amount knob. And using the second LFO to control the modulation bus of the Hertz donut. Tap tempo mode for audio rate. This input accepts gate signals, where the oscillator will loosely imitate the input frequency with adjustable multiplication or division. You can clock the tap with LFOs, oscillators or any gate signals. Then you can do a multiplication or a division of the frequency with the frequency knob.
pseudo random gate signals from the Zorlone cannon. Non constant gates will affect the stability of the frequency. You can also use tap tempo for LFO modulations. It can add some interesting rhythmics with a good synchronization. Using a more complex waveform will affect even more the Kermit stability. In this case it's a signal from the Piston Honda. Seems like they both have a great fun together, don't you agree? Note that while in tap tempo mode, Setting the CB destination to the frequency won't do anything. Patch cord free chaotic modulations. On the Kermit, each oscillator's output is normal to the CV input of the opposite unit, allowing patch cord free chaotic modulations. Patch cord free chaotic modulations. Again. Each oscillator have two sets of outputs provided to correctly modulate both analog and digital circuits, such as the special 0 to 5 volt inputs available on harvestman modules. The bipolar output is nominally 10 volt peak to peak. The unipolar output goes from 0 to 5 volt. Combine the Kermit with other modules like this Polyvox VCF to get crazy results. Let's try the modulator frequency output of the Hertz Donut Mark II to tap the Kermit. Now I'm getting more and more excited. I love so much the Kermit's Lobster Bank. I think I'm getting even crazier than this patch. I so do hope you are, are you? <laughs> 